Hey, Reckoners, and welcome back. Today's indie game is IF Tutorial, which stands for Interactive Fiction Tutorial. But I suspect that this is more than just a tutorial. I think it is also, in itself, a piece of interactive fiction. But let us dive into it to make sure I have not played this before. So, welcome to Adam Cadre's Interactive Fiction Tutorial. Press any key to continue. I will choose. Hmm, let's see. Let's go with. G. <gasps> Gotta click into the window first. No? No? A? I'm hitting all the keys. Oh, S worked. Okay. A piece of interactive fiction, or IF, I'm gonna call it IF, is a computer program that generates stories. Exactly what story you will end up reading when you launch an IF program depends on the input you provide. Very often, the story is told in the second person, that is, the main character is referred to as you. You are told where you are and in what circumstances you find yourself, and then you are given a prompt which looks like this, and it shows a character. At the prompt, you type what you, would, you want your character to do in the story. There is no menu of choices, no list of verbs to click. You can type anything you want. The implicit promise is that, is that the program will understand whatever you type and respond appropriately. Of course, it won't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Interactive fiction programs understand some fairly complex commands. They also choke on some very basic ones. If you want to avoid frustration, it's important to get a feel for the type of input an IF program will be able to process. That's where this tutorial comes in. In a moment, this program will present you with the beginning of an interactive story. In a real piece of interactive fiction, you would then enter commands of your own choosing. But this is a tutorial. At times, you'll be given some freedom to enter commands, but at other times, you'll be told exactly what to type. Often, you'll have to type in those commands exactly as written. The story will respond to your commands, and so will this tutorial. The story will always reply in grey or white, and the tutorial will always reply in blue boldface bracketed in stars. Press a key to begin the story. It took a long time to get here, but at last you think you've reached your destination. You double-check the address. Yes, this is it. Before the gate, you are standing in front of a handsome but imposing wrought iron gate. You hope it's unlocked because there aren't any footholds to, cli to help you climb it, and those spikes at the top look nasty. Type the following command exactly as written. Open the gate. Note that commands are generally written with the caret prompt in front to indicate that you are in that they are in fact commands. Don't type the um, greater than caret yourself, it's already on the screen. But everything after the caret you must type exactly as you see it. And backspaces don't work. So if you make an error, hit enter and try again. Whoa, backspace doesn't work. That's a hashtag game changer. Open the gate, period. You turn the handle, and the gate swings open. You step inside, front courtyard. You are standing just inside the gate, as the gate of a large estate in the heart of the city. Before you is a grand edifice of marble columns and green copper detail work. A broad walkway leads between manicured gardens to the front entrance. Before you enter the building, close the gate. Now you can sort of certainly use the same format as last time and enter this command, close the gate. But that turns out not to be necessary. Capitalization doesn't actually matter, nor do articles or punctuation. You can get away with typing this, close gate. Indeed, we don't usually use the uh, the type stuff. What do you call that? An article? Backspace is now allowed, hot damn. Close gate. Uh, okay, you close the gate behind you and follow the walkway up to the front entrance. Half a dozen marble steps lead up to a gigantic set of double doors, but the doors are cordoned off, as often happens when estates like this get renovated. What once was the main entrance is no longer an actual way in. A sign directs you to walk around the corner of the building and take a flight of stairs down to the basement level. You do so bottom of the stairs. You are now standing before an anonymous grey door that is not really in keeping with what is otherwise a palatial building in the classical style. Stairs lead up to ground level. You've probably noticed that your character is not entirely under your control. You didn't say that you wanted to follow the science directions to the door. It happened automatically when you closed the gate. This sort of thing is not uncommon. There's a door in front of you, so open it. As you've seen, there are several ways you can phrase your command. In general, it's best to keep your commands short with no unnecessary words. Open door. 
You open the door and walk from brilliant sunshine into the dimness of the windowless indoors vestibule. You are in a small, empty antechamber, antechamber, behind, by antechamber, behind you is the door you just walked in. In front of you is an archway leading to a long hallway. A well-programmed piece of if will offer many ways for you to proceed into the hallway, though proceed into hallway is unlikely to be one of them. Let's keep your commands succinct. Try this. Enter hallway. There are always likely to be successful. These are always are also likely to be successful in a well-programmed piece of if. Go into hallway. Enter long hallway. Go through archway. Enter hallway. Enter archway. Walk into hallway. Enter arch, and so on. Enter arch. That's a. Uh, that's very broad. That's a uh, very accommodating of you, Mr. Programmer. So we'll go enter hallway. As instructed, we are nothing if not obedient. You walk through the archway out of the vestibule. Long hallway south. And this hallway, lit by cold fluorescent tubes that line the top edges of the walls, stretches a long way to the north. To the south, an archway leads back to the vestibule. It is a convention in interactive fiction for stories to help players move around by including compass directions in the descriptions, even when the player character doesn't have a compass. This is handy in locations like this hallway where all we want to do is walk straight ahead. The vast majority of IF programs don't keep track of which way you're facing, so commands like go forward or turn left almost never work. Instead, try this. Go north. Middle of long hallway. You are in the middle of a hallway which stretches a long way to the north and south. Moving via compass directions is such a common thing to do in if that even go north is considered too laborious to type. Instead, just type this. North. Also note that this time you wound up in a new location without this story explicitly telling you you walk down the hallway. Long hallway, north end. This hallway, lit by cold fluorescent tubes that lines the top edges of the walls, stretches a long way to the south. To the north, an archway leads to a flight of stairs. Actually, moving via compass directions is such a common thing to do in F that even north is considered too laborious to type. Instead, just type this. N. You walk through the archway and up the stairs into daylight. Maze. You are in a small chamber open to the sky, but enclosed on all sides by tall stone walls. Exits lead north and west. Why not south back the way you came? Because as soon as you walk into the middle of the chamber, a stone wall slams down behind you. Crash! Let's review the verbs you've been introduced to. Open, close, enter, go. You can always move around using these directions. N-W-N-N-E-W-E-S-W-S-S-E. -S -S -E. Using these commands, reach the end of this very basic maze. If you need to see a room description again, type one of these commands. Look around, look L. As we've seen, if players like to keep things concise. Okay, so we have... Exits to the what? North and West. Well, I always go West. You are in a small chamber open to the sky, but enclosed on all sides by tall stone walls. Exits lead West and East, and a closed door lies to the North. Open. Door. It seems to be locked. The interactive fiction player's eternal nemesis, the locked door. Never fear, there must be a key around here somewhere. We'll find that key. Let's go. Quest. You've come to a dead end. The only exit lies to the east. Look. Okay, I'm hoping... So I'm not... I'm not 100% sure if uh, I have to look or if entering the room will tell me everything. Like, if I don't look, will the game tell me there's a key there? I don't know. We're going to go back east. And go back east. And then go north. You are in a small chamber up in the sky. Blah, 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 blah. Exits lead to the north, east, and south. We'll go east. And we'll go east. Can't go that. Oh, north and west. Sorry, I can't even read. I'm just freaking trying to burn through. North. You are in a small chamber, a copper key lies glinting on the ground. The vast majority of if stories revolve around accumulating and using objects you find. You'll want this key. Enter, take key, or get key, whichever you prefer. Take gay. How about no? Noun error. I'm not going to read that error message, it's too long. Take key. You pick up the key. In this tutorial, you probably won't lose track of what you're carrying, but for the sake of introducing the command, type inventory or just I. You're carrying a copper key. This tutorial is nice, but I don't know how strictly these rules carry over from IF to IF. Uh, okay, with the copper, copper key. Copper key. Copper key. Let's go south. West. South. West. Open door. I did not fully explore the maze. Uh, let's try... 
Oh, unlock, not use key. Okay, unlock. What do you want to unlock? Door. That's cool that it prompts for noun after verbiage. You unlock the door with a satisfying thunk. Note that you didn't have to type unlock door with copper key. Typing unlock door is sufficient, and the story will assume that you mean to use the copper key. At least, this one does. Some ifworks will always demand that you specify how to unlock doors. Others will do so if you have multiple keys. Still others will automatically unlock them for you as long as you have the right key in your inventory. There's no single convention. So now we go north, through the door. The door is closed. Ah, oh, we unlocked it. We need to open the door now. In some if works, your character will automatically open closed doors when you try to enter them, and even unlock them if you have the key. Others, especially in older works, will force you to perform each step yourself. This door is one of the old-fashioned kind. We open the door. As you've seen, sometimes if stories will assume that if you open a door, you also want to go through it. Other times, you'll just be told that you've successfully opened the door, and you'll have to type a separate command to enter the location it leads to. This is one of those times. Um, I think, in general, I prefer having to type in each thing explicitly, because it can lead to some interesting story elements. Like, if I open the door and don't automatically go through, the story then has a window for something to lunge out and attack me, or, you know, something to happen. So let us progress north through the door. You are in a small chamber open to the sky, but enclosed on all sides by a tall stone wall. Sorry, by tall stone walls. An exit leads northwest. To the south is an open door. Northwest. You are in a small chamber, open to the sky, but enclosed on all sides by tall stone walls. Exits lead north, west, and southeast. There is also a hole in the ground with a ladder leading down. Yes, U for up and D for down are also accepted directions. So, I think they expect us to go down the ladder first. So we will go north. Dead end. Fine. We'll go west. Dead end. Fine. Down we go. You are in a dim underground chamber lit only by the daylight trickling in through a hole in the ceiling. A ladder leads up to ground level, while a passageway leads north. Well, I guess north is the only really option, so we go north. You follow the twisty passageway. Uh, another ladder goes up, and a passageway leads east. Note that even though you went north to get here, you can't return to where you were by going south. The passageway between the two rooms was curved. This doesn't only happen in mazes. Wait, 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 wait. So I assume the passageway east goes back to where we came from. I see. So we're gonna go up the ladder. That wasn't actually clear though. I guess if it's only one pathway through assume. That's actually, that's really confusing if it doesn't tell you which direction you came into the room from, or did I miss that? I mean, it did, it did say twisty passageway, but if there was an exit to the south and the east, I would have assumed I, the south would return me. That's insanely confusing. Oh well. This must be the end of the maze. Other than the hole in the ground leading back to the underground level, the only exit is a granite archway leading west to a small orchard. Before we proceed to the next segment of the tutorial, try this. Instead of exiting in the usual manner via compass directions, enter this command. Go outside. You walk out into the orchard. You are standing in a small grove of trees. An archway leads east. Don't go exploring just yet. Instead, return to where you came from. E will be fine. Now try entering the orchard again, and once again, not by typing W, this time... Phrase the command like so. Enter. Orchard. You walk out into the orchard. You are standing once. It's you're standing in a small group of trees and archway east. And back once more. This mm, Here's the third phrase in the try. Walk. Through. Granite. Apparently that worked. So did this, so did you saunter through solid stone as the phrase walk through granite suggests? What is going on here? Interactive fiction authors have to account for the fact that different players will try to perform the same action by typing different things. When authors don't include enough synonyms, players tend to get stuck trying to figure out the accepted phrasing. Too many rounds of guess the verb or guess the noun, and they're likely to quit. That is extremely true. So, let's go east now. We can go east, yes? Oh, there's more text to read. 
Let's consider nouns. While this certainly isn't true of all if programs, the majority take a fairly unsophisticated approach to object names. Every object is a list of names it can be called. If you're typing the part of a command where the program expects a noun, and you use one or more words on an object's list of names, and no words that aren't on that list, the program will decide that you mean that object. Unless there are multiple objects that qualify, but we'll talk about that later. I'm trying to go east. The result is that, in order to account for a number of reasonable commands, go outside, enter orchard, walk through a granite archway, an author might just add all those words to an object's list of names, outside orchard granite archway. If you just have granite, that's fine. Most if programs don't distinguish between adjectives and nouns, as no other object has the name granite. The program will look at walk through granite and decide that the verb you intended was enter and the noun you intended was the archway, and entering the archway takes you to the orchard. This can actually be pretty useful if you happen across an object described as a weird thingamajig. You don't actually have to type take thingamajig if you want to pick it up. Try typing take weird will do just fine. Okay then, back one more time. East. To see how accepting the program is, try this. Enter granite outside orchard arch arch. Boom, that worked. Okay, now let's see what we can do in this orchard. The description is pretty bare bones. Maybe we can get more details by looking at things. Try this. Look at trees. The branches of the trees are thick with broad dark green leaves through which you get an occasional glimpse of brightly colored fruit. And now try looking at the fruit. Looking at things is a huge part of interactive fiction, so much so that look at is considered too much to have to type. The verb examine doesn't save any keystrokes, but its abbreviation X does. So type this. X fruit. It's my favorite X-Man. The fruit is almost perfectly round and bright pink with faint purple swirls. Try to take the fruit. Take fruit. The trees are quite tall and none of the branches are within reach. So the fruit is up too high. It seems could jump work? I suspect no. Jump. You jump as high as you can, but the fruit remains well out of reach. Okay, didn't work, but we got a customized response instead of an error message. That suggests that jumping might be useful later. Meanwhile, this is beginning to look like a puzzle. Perhaps you might need to chop down a tree branch or get a friendly monkey to fetch the fruit for you. But since this is a tutorial, we'll simply we'll keep it simple. Try climb tree, or simply you if you prefer. You are perched in one of the trees of the orchard. Leaves brush against your face and fruit dangles tantalizingly from the end of each branch. Now the fruit appears to be in reach. Go ahead and take it. Though take fruit and get fruit should be understood by any game. In this case, it might seem more natural to pick fruit. That's the sort of thing that's likely to work in a well-designed modern piece of if, and unlikely to work in a piece that's older or more slapdash. We're still going to take fruit, because I'm old school, I guess. You shimmy out to the end of one of a likely looking branch and they snatch the fruit with a solid yank. But as you do, you hear a loud crack. This branch is about to give. Uh oh, this can't be good. Jump! Mom is always complaining about the acrobatic jumps you take out of the tree in the backyard, but clearly they are good practice as you're able to avoid injury by leaping clear of the danger as the branch crashes to the ground. You even land on your feet, though your momentum causes you to take a tumble and the stuff you are holding goes flying. Park. You have managed to land in the park, adjoining the state where your tutor with well, nah, take two. You have managed to land in the park, adjoining the estate where your, your tutorial began, but apparently the tutorial carries over into the park, sort of like a Wi-Fi signal. A path leads north. The copper key you found glints in the grass. The piece of fruit you picked lies on the grass, looking none the worse for its journey. Near the fence, demarcating the edge of the park is a sturdy wooden picnic table. In addition to the benches built into it, there is a chair at each end, one red, one blue. On the table, you see a note and a bell. What on earth was that, Mom? Acrobatic jump? In a lot of interactive fiction, especially in pieces written in the early days of the medium, you're not playing any particular character, you're just a nameless adventurer, but modern games are more likely to have you playing someone with a name and a past, and even character traits that will prevent you from performing certain actions. E.g., maybe your character is a vegetarian, so when you type eat rump roast, the story replies never, meat is murder. For a while, it may have looked like you were just playing a cipher in this tutorial, but apparently you weren't. So let's find out who you are. While this command doesn't always tell you everything there is to know about your character, a lot of games are actually pretty cagey about revealing too much early on. Try this command, x me. 
You are Lily Valencia, nine-year-old daughter of Trevor and Brenda Valencia of New Granda, Dorado, USA. You are wearing a tie-dyed t-shirt with a peace symbol on it, a pair of jeans with embroidered hearts on the back pockets, and a pair of sandals that show off the awesome metallic blue polish on your toenails. That description is oddly appropriate to how I look right now. Minus all the stuff except for the blue toenails. As noted, Lily dropped off all her stuff when she jumped out of the tree, so let's gather it up. Don't pick up don't pick up each item individually. Instead type this. Take all. Do I get the chairs too? Copper key taken. Piece of fruit taken. Picnic table. You couldn't even budge this table, let alone pick it up. Red chair. The chair is bolted down. Blue chair. The chair is bolted down. This output may raise some questions. For instance, why did the program try to take the table? That's silly. Maybe, but the program doesn't know that, and you said to take all. Okay, but then why didn't the program take try to take the note? Some programs will, but in most, if, take all means to take everything in the same container as you. Your current container is the park. The same is true of the key, the fruit, the table, and the chairs. But the note and the bell are contained by the table, not the park, and so take all doesn't try to take them. Let's look at another example of how interactive fiction programs manage space. Try this. Sit in chair. You can give a very short answer to the question like this one below. E.g., if it asks whether you want to wear the yellow dress or the green dress, you can just type green all by itself. You can also ignore these questions and type a whole new command, but in this case, please don't do that. You only get one chance to answer the question. If you don't give an accepted answer, you have to enter the full command again. Which do you mean? The red chair? Or the blue chair? Of course we always red chair. Always. And now, try to go north. You'll have to get out of the red chair first. You can only use exits that are in the same container as you. The path north is contained by the park, but you are currently contained by the chair. This comes up a lot. Many games begin with you waking up, and when you try to get your first action, you're told you'll have to get out of the bed first. To get out of the chair, you can type exit, though since stand is more intuitive, that's implemented as a synonym for exit, so is get up. Use whichever you like. I'm gonna use get up. That's what I would probably try, even though it's less old school. You have managed to land in the park. Yes, indeed, you've read that before. Okay. We saw that interactive fiction generally errs on the side of being overly accepting where nouns are concerned, and we're seeing the same is true of verbs. Try this. Read. Note. The note reads, ring bell for service, and now read fruit. The fruit is almost perfectly round. Blah, 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 blah. This works because in this program, at least, read is just a synonym for examine, just as stand is a synonym for exit and pick is a synonym for take. You may be wondering whether you're supposed to memorize all this and where you can get hold of a complete list of verbs. You are not, and you can't. Part of the point of having players type their inputs is to make them figure out which verbs will work by reading and thinking about the story, rather than just seeing the accepted verbs listed in a menu and mechanically trying them all out. For instance, you have a piece of fruit where it you have a piece of fruit. <clears throat> what are some things you can do with fruit? There are lots of answers, but let's try this. Squeeze fruit. You give the piece of fruit you picked a careful squeeze. Squeeze! Squeeze! It has a fair bit of give to, to it. You hope that means that it's ripe, rather than overripe. And now that you know that squeeze is an accepted verb in this particular story, what else can you squeeze? Try pairing that verb with a different object and see whether you get an interesting response. Well, we have the key in our possession, do we not? Ow! The teeth are sharp enough that you hurt a little when you grip the key too tightly. Squeezing things isn't a big part of most works of interactive fiction, but moving objects around is. Therefore, most modern if can handle some pretty sophisticated commands where object manipulation is concerned. Try this. Put key and fruit on table. Copper key, done. Piece of fruit, done. Now do a quick... L to see what's on the table. Um, on the table is a copper key, fruit note, and a bell. Take every exery, everything except the bell from the table. That is a very complex command. Or just take all but bell from table. What did I? Where's my typo? Take everything except. Noun error. This could mean a number of things. A noun used in your command may not be present. 
Ah, I cannot spell the word accept. That is the problem there. Okay, piece of fruit removed, copper key removed, note removed. If you enter the preceding commands correctly, you'll have seen that yes, even a command that complex works just fine. Of course, it's very rare that you'll need to want to type anything that involved. Let's have another look at our inventory. Remember, the short version is I. You are carrying a note, a copper key, a piece of fruit. So what do you do when you want to get rid of something you're carrying without carefully placing it on or in another object? Just drop it. For instance, try this. Drop key. Dropped. And one more L to verify it's on the ground. Okay, at long last, try to eat the fruit. The fruit is covered with a thick peel. There's no way you could possibly... Sorry, there's no way you could successfully bite into this. The natural thing to try at this point is peel fruit, so give it a go. Peel. Fruit. You try to dig your fingernails into the peel to rip a piece of it away, but it's just too tough. Now, maybe you can pick up that key and use its sharp teeth to cut into the peel, but let's try an alternative solution. The note said to ring the bell for service, so do that. Ring. Bell. How about I type bell with two L's, you dumb piece of... <clears throat> a clear note rings out across the park, and in response, a parrot emerges from a distant tree and flutters down next to you. Ah, how can I help? It asks. Another character. One who wants to be helpful, even. There's a particular syntax for giving orders to other characters, so let's try it out. Type the following. Parrot, comma, peel, fruit. The parrot pierces the skin with its sharp beak, then spins the fruit with one of its talons, so that the peel comes off in a long spiral. It drops the peel on the table and the fruit in your hand. Most characters will not be so amenable to following your commands, however. You are much more likely to talk with them than, than to order them around. There are many different conversational systems in IF. In some works, you type talk to parrot and select what exactly to say from a menu of choices. In this tutorial, you'll take a brief look at the most common system, ask slash tell. Try the phrase ask parrot about, followed by any word or phrase you like. Ask parrot about park. Ugh, I don't know much about that, the parrot replies. Now go ahead and eat the fruit. I probably chose my noun poorly, didn't I? You didn't have breakfast, so you gobble down the fruit in no time flat. It tastes oddly of bubblegum. And what should you do after every meal? Try this. Brush teeth. Verb error. This generally means the first word of your command has not been recognized. Why didn't that work? Well, probably because there was no toothbrush around or anything else to indicate that it would work. No harm in trying, but also no reason to expect the game to accommodate you. And this is the last point I want to make in this tutorial. I often see people respond to posts about if games with comments like, So first I tried Summon Dinosaur, and it didn't work. And then I tried to murder my family, and it wouldn't let me do that, so I quit. This game sucks. And uh, yeah, that's not playing the game, that's trying to break the game, which is no great accomplishment. These things are fragile. In a sense, playing interactive fiction is like playing a musical instrument. Anyone can get some kind of output out of it, but just as guitar players need to learn how to arrange their fingers to produce the sorts of th sounds that make for a good song, if players need to learn how to phrase their commands to produce this sort of seamless back and forth that makes for a good interactive story. And as with music, a tutorial can only take you so far. You also need practice. So go and play some real if. If, for some reason, you would like to play this tutorial again, you can now type restart in a normal piece of interactive fiction. You could also type restore to reload a game you had saved earlier by typing save naturally or undo to go back a turn. But my guess is that is that what you would will really want to type now is quit. Bye bye. So, that was a bit more of a tutorial than I anticipated, I apologize, but I think I'm going to keep this video anyway and publish it because I'm going to use it uh, as a vector to ask anybody who stuck around for the whole thing whether or not you would be interested in seeing me do more works of interactive fiction. I know I've done visual novels before, but I haven't done proper interactive fiction where you issue commands. So if you would like me to do some more of those, speak up and I will do so. If you have specific ones, drop links and I will gladly take a look at those. Uh, if you want to do this tutorial for yourself, there's a link in the description below. And uh, that's pretty much everything. So, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Signature catchphrase.